My name is Margaret Adele, and welcome to another indie book review. This is one I actually signed up for the ARC team for. I apparently only do this for trans books, <laughs> and so today I am reviewing The Prince's Dearest Guards by Beau Van Dalen. This is a queer fantasy romance about a prince who uh, has just hit his 21st birthday and he is going to go on this like ritual hunting trip with the two bodyguards that were just assigned to him and this is their kind of bonding experience as well as the ritual of going to a quote unquote hunt the mythical serpent that the royal family is tasked with keeping at bay. No one really expects the serpent to pop up because it's been centuries since it's been spotted. So this is really just a ritual of the rite of passage and uh, an act of bonding between the prince and the guards that will basically be his bodyguards for the rest of their lives. Now, I always am looking out for more uh, trans romance books, hence why I signed up for this arc list. And I was, I really wanted to like it. Um, I think one of the struggles I had was it did not feel like a complete book in itself. I have brought this up before with other books of this length. This thing was shorter than 80 pages, at least the copy I had, and it felt like it was more an excerpt of a larger story than a complete story in itself. Now, I will fully admit, I am much more a slow burn, long-term romance girly. So the fact that we had characters that were like 20 pages in already talking about what their lives would look like together was kind of, it was too soon for me. Uh, but there were other aspects to it that felt like they needed so much more fleshed out or just explanations in the first place. I had a really hard time reading the world building of this kingdom. Technology wise, they are fighting primarily with swords and using messenger birds. Okay, we don't really have any guns or firearms. We don't really have any kind of messenger or postal service. Okay, makes sense. But then they stop at a random roadside tavern just on their way and this random roadside tavern has a full working shower with hot water. Fun fact, in real world history, guns predate hot showers by like centuries. <laughs> like, the first guns were a thing in, like, Henry VIII time. <laughs> um, so I could not get a read on the level of technology. I could not get a read on the level of magic because originally it is explained that magic is this big taboo thing, this big forbidden thing. Like, the prince gasps at hearing someone mention it. It's so taboo. But then later on in Apothecary, a rando without like being secret it was like oh yeah btw my potions are enchanted just an apothecary that's like oh yeah these potions are magically enchanted and no one's surprised by that it's like oh yeah thanks like okay is magic taboo or isn't it or is this apothecary just like next level at reading people and knowing who would keep the secret and not out them for this horribly taboo thing like that kind of aspect also, um, we find out that neither of the prince's guards actually understand what their roles are supposed to be because in the first conversation, they have to ask what their roles are going to be. And I'm like, I'm sorry, they didn't tell you before they sent you off with the heir to the throne to protect. You have no idea. Um, but also this thing, it did the thing. It, it, it is one of my pet peeves. Um, it skipped the first conversation. I don't know why I've seen a lot of romance books that do that, that be like, oh yeah, the the romantic po a couple, polycule, whatever, talked about did it without actually showing you the conversation. Like that first conversation is so crucial. You gotta set up what the vibe is gonna be. What's the, what's the general arc of the relationship gonna be? You will have to skip conversations eventually down the line, just like a whole, they got to know each other further type of conversation, but that shouldn't be the first one. Especially when in the first one, again, they're asking what their roles are. So that is a perfect world building opportunity for the prince to be like, ah, oh, yes, the guards roles look like this. And they would explain it to the reader, like that kind of thing. Um, the plot itself also reads as 
slightly plotting. Again, there's only 80 pages about in this book and a lot of it is like spent in taverns. A giant amount of the pages just spent fucking in taverns, which yes, it's an erotica. But my thing is, if you just want the thing to be fucking in taverns, then just have the whole story be fucking in taverns. But it added this whole other element that I can't talk about for spoilery purposes, but it added this whole other element of very clearly there is themes and intrigues and plots beyond just bunch of dudes fucking in a tavern. And that's where it felt so short with the 80 pages, because 80 pages of just straight up dudes having fun in a tavern, like, yeah, you can, you can fit that in 80 pages comfortably. But if you're going to add the big reveals and all the big stuff at the end and have it feel impactful, that's where I kind of struggle with it. But then, of course, this begs the question, what about the steamy scenes? How do we feel about the steamy scenes? Uh, they weren't properly steamy. Uh, we had, you know, different positions and uh, pretty good at descriptions. Um, I, I was not having to be like, okay, wait, what? Where are the body parts now? Like, I did not have to do that, which can sometimes happen in erotica and really take you out of the story. Um, the only reason I could not fully jump into the erotica is the protagonist was just slightly too immature for me to be fully comfy with it. Now, an immature or a childlike protagonist uh, is a valid story choice right? You can do a lot with that. You can set up a, an arc. You can make a coming of age tale with that. Like having an immature or childlike protagonist in a story is a valid choice, but it is an uncomfy choice for an erotica. Unless you are specifically couching it in kink terms where it's like, this is a full adult. See this full adult? But right now they want to be a little. Like that's different if it's very clearly stated as a kink thing done by a consenting adult with other consenting adults. And yes, just so we're clear, they are all consenting adults. There's none of that dubious consent nonsense in here. But I wanted Hal to definitely be more mature for the scenes Hal was being put in. Not to mention the fact that the guards are both a decade older than him and he's 21. And I say this as a 30 year old, you could not pay me to hook up with a 21 year old. That feels like an entirely different level of maturity at this point. And Hal didn't help the, the, the gap feel any smaller because he was so sheltered and so unsure and so nervous all of the time and yes had to be like coaxed out of his shell constantly by the guards just enough that it felt uncomfy he was evidently an uwu soft boy for the most part um i liked the talk of dysphoria i mean i, I didn't like i didn't like the dysphoria but like the representation of it and the the talk of how it could pop up wherever and the way the guards talk to him after it or talk to him through it like that kind of stuff was was nice i liked the implication in the world building that elves in this world are like very known to be heavily trans that it's just like like one of the guards tossed out like oh yeah i know elves like, i've known a ton of elves i do this kind of thing that's normal i'm not exactly sure the level of queer norm that this entire world is though because yes the prince like the crown prince is trans but like also there's talk about other people getting thrown out of their homes for having a same-sex partner so it's like probably similar to what we have today i would think uh they didn't exactly state what level of uh you know homophobia to queer norm spectrum we were looking at but i think is closer to queer norm but not entirely um regardless uh overall i gave this book three stars there was a lot of good ideas in it. I love me a good polycule romance. I love a trans romance. I love trans erotica and letting trans people get to be the sexy ones. It's a lot of fun, but there just needed to be more. And it is fully possible that there was a, a publishing thing. I've mentioned this before in other videos, but in a lot of cases, indie authors will have to make their work shorter because if you cross a certain threshold with the publisher page count wise, the price gets jacked up. I don't know if that's what's happened here. Um, if it is, 
again I would have said maybe like slim down the the scope a little bit maybe have slightly fewer sex scenes which is blasphemous for an erotica I understand that but um maybe if if you had to write a story that short work to fit the, what you had in a little bit better and if you didn't have to write the story that short I would have liked to see it a little bit more fleshed out as a whole and you know it's only 80 pages I will read I will read several hundred pages of of a queer polycule falling in love I have I have read several 500 page books of poly queer polycules falling in love it's it's a favorite of mine um but in general there were still great ideas I do wish that Hal was a little bit more mature for these scenes that he was being put in um in this erotica but again no dubious consent no non-consent uh all of that stuff wasn't there it was it was just a slight edge just enough of a slight edge that i could not fully jump into it but if that's not a thing you worry about uh you will probably be 100 percent on board with uh uwu prince getting just absolutely railed by hot beefy guard dudes and be warned 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 <laughs> Be warned about the ending. It gets big and dramatic. And uh, if you would like to continue with the series, it is a series. I will be stopping here because I only gave this book three stars. And according to my own personal rules, I do not continue a series if the first book was not at least a four. But I know other people are always on the lookout for more trans wrecks and, and want more of this kind of thing. So if you are like me, constantly on the search for more trends, fantasy, high romance, all that kind of stuff, um, definitely check this one out. And with nothing else to say, I hope you have a wonderful day and a marvelous tomorrow.